following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Field, exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. Welcome to the show. It is Hump Day. We are coming to you live from the SWBC Mortgage Living Room in Frisco, Texas. Proudly, proudly brought to you by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. And fellas, what's the old saying? Ask and ye shall receive, ye shall. You boys ask for it. <laughs> they are on the move. Bye, Everson. Love you. Gone. Word is Don Terry Poe is on the, the chopping block. Daryl Worley's on the chopping block. So the question for me is, I got a couple of questions actually, fellas. First off, how are y'all doing today? You look good. You're very bright today, Nate. You look, you look, uh, you look very expressive today. Feeling in a groove. Oh, hold on, let me let, let me mark out this. Everson Griffin, Dante. Oh, oh, I was busy. I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a few more. I got a few more. Let me get, oh, a big star by Bradley, a name, a Darren Armstrong. Yeah, we finna see some young blood. Yeah. All right. yeah well, How you, you feeling, know, Kurt? Gonna, How you doing? I ain't gonna say this Good. right out loud. I ain't gonna say this right That me and Kurt was in the uh, meetings yesterday. Making moves. <laughs> All the names. <laughs> oh, oh, I said that. Jess, out, Jesse, sorry. how you doing today? Yeah. I'm fantastic, man. Whenever Nate's happy, I'm happy. There you go. Yep. All right. Man, I ain't got to say another it. word. Jesse, is your show today, brother. No, no. no Jesse's no, already no, had no. two this week. We need some Nate today. Some <laughs> Nate. All right. So question for you guys. They're, it sounds like they're moving these guys out. Is this the beginning of the purge? Or are they? is this rebuilding? Is this getting rid of guys that, that aren't performing and sending a message? Is this – are some of these the guys that we're talking – anonymous sources or is it a little bit of all the above like what's the what's the meaning behind these moves now because they typically a, don't do this B, stuff c d <laughs> and all of the above you just mentioned shat because <laughs> this is this is kind of uncharacteristic of the cowboys they don't they don't move quantity of players out in the middle of the season usually it's one guy here one guy here like if they move all three of these guys this is something that they at least in my recent memory, they haven't done in the middle of a season. So, interested to get y'all's thoughts. What do you think the the, the driving factor is of this? Go ahead. Yeah. See, y'all don't want me to talk, and then when I start talking, y'all say I talk too much. So I try to be quiet and let y'all go first. So Kurt, Nate, feel free to jump in this thing and, and say your piece. I, I am not peeving to say much because we had we got ongoing meetings and Mr. Jones asked me and Kurt not to say anything. I just... <laughs> I, and I think we lost Kurt. Oh, I think he's back. No, I, think Kurt, we got I just got back. So, yes. Kurt, I already, I already cleared you. I told him we was in the meetings last night. So, you know, Mr. Jones and uh, uh, Will McClay asked us not to say anything. But do you have anything you want to add to that? I mean, if, I, I'm not Will saying McClay, word, I don't want to get kicked we, out of the meetings. Will McClay was asking me anything. I'm not making near enough money, so uh, obviously he's not. Um, but yeah, it, it uh, obviously it's it's a move that I think we were all hoping, or these moves were all something we were hoping. It's time to you know the season looks like it's headed downhill. It's time to see what these young guys can do. If you're, if you're going to lose with Everson Griffin and Don Terry Poe and Worley and guys like that, you might as well lose with young guys you can develop for next year. So. Hopefully that's part of it. They're, they want to, and McCarthy said in his press conference today, he wanted to see the young guys play, and probably wants to start, you know, working on that culture. So, Jesse, fellas, sometimes, sometimes, the tanking or rebuilding, sometimes, you get to choose when you want to tank, and when you want to rebuild, and there are other times. When the tanking and rebuilding chooses you. 
we are at a situation where now the tanking and rebuilding has chosen Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. Because they came into this season, they thought the moves that they made in the offseason, signing Mike McCarthy and his coaching staff, bringing in Don Terry Poe and bringing in Everson Griffin and bringing in Gerald McCoy and, and, and these pieces here and there, they, 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 were, they were gearing themselves up to come into this season and have a productive season and compete for NFC Championship and potentially a Super Bowl. And then the season started. And down one man, Gerald McCoy, before we even got to the season. And then down another man. And then his Tyron is gone. And LC is gone. And Leighton was gone for a little bit. I mean, you start dropping like flies. And then your quarterback goes down. And then your defense is playing at a horrific uh, rate. A historically horrific rate right now. The, the, the rebuilding has chosen the Dallas Cowboys. I, I'm, I am, like you said, Shannon, this is something that is not normal for Jerry Jones and the Cowboys. In this... 2020 wildly unnormal world that we're living in today. It is finally caught up. Tanking and rebuilding has chosen the Cowboys. They can't avoid it anymore. It is time that they go in and get all of the assets they can for those players who are not producing. And I went and I looked up something this morning and I went back all the way, Nate, to your time. The Jimmy Johnson era. Yes, sir. Okay. Jimmy Johnson's first season here, what was his record, Nate? I think we was like three and some or one and whatever, you know. One and 15. Yeah, yeah we were bad. The next we year, Nate, what was Jimmy Johnson's and the Cowboys record? Were we three and 13? Seven and nine. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm getting confused. I got beat so bad. Go ahead. Then on. it was <laughs> 11 and five. Yes, sir. And then, dun 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 dun. The trophies Football. began to come. But mm. in that period, it took a little bit of losing. It took a little bit of cleaning house, mm. getting his guys, the guys that he wanted to get his culture the way he wanted. Mm -hmm. Then it was the belief. Oh, well, 11 and five, guys, we, 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 we could do this. We got Troy with the number one overall pick. I got we got story Emmett. We got too. Michael. Right we got all these guys. I got all yeah. my guys that I'm ready to go with. Yes, sir. And then one Super Bowl, two Super Bowls. Take a break. Three Super Bowls. So if I'm not comparing Mike McCarthy to Jimmy Johnson, I'm comparing scenarios. When you've had like they had Tom Landry, who was the coach forever before Jimmy Johnson got here. When you had Jason Garrett, who was the coach for 10 years, that is a long time. 10 years is a long time to be a head coach in this league. And there is things that have been instilled in the players that are on this roster that does not match, whether that's intellect, whether that's uh, 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 emotions, awesome. whether that's effort, whether that's attitude. There are things in these players that worked well for Jason Garrett's liking that may not work well for what Mike McCarthy wants. So you have to eliminate some of them, allow him to bring some guys in and to restructure and to rebuild this thing. The Cowboys just ran into a situation where finally tanking and rebuilding has chosen them. They didn't choose it. And this is what you're seeing with these moves today. You know, I'm gonna tell you something, man. I, I remember even after that 11 and five year for Jimmy, man, that was great what you just presented there, Jesse. Even after that 11 and 5 year, and y'all heard me say this a thousand times on this show, we came in after that beating that Barry Sanders put on us up in Detroit, Pontiac Silverdome at the time. And we were excited. I mean, from the offensive, defensive coordinators to every player, we was excited. We was jumping around. And Jimmy was talking to the head coach of the Detroit Lions as he was walking out of the field, so he had time to think about what he was going to say to us. When he walked in, his face just dropped because we were cheering and we were happy. And Jimmy stopped us cold-blooded, cussed us out and said, if this is what y'all want, y'all ain't the guys I thought you were. We going for something bigger than this right here. This is just a step to where we want to go. And he's saying, get ready for Monday because I still got some things I need to get ready for the next season. So we went from Sunday to Monday with a new game plan on how we was going to proceed the next year. And I, and I kind of look at Coach McCarthy in that way for us being ready and being orderly and have a plan. So 
when as he purged himself, as this yacht come into the thing full of black smoke, <laughs> patches, holes need to be patched up. I'm with you, man. I'm with you, Jess. I'm with you, Kurt. I'm with you, Shannon. Chris Bean. I'm with y'all. What? How do you think? How the, 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 how, the, go ahead, Shannon. I was going to say the same thing, exactly what you're going to say. Go ahead. Well, just how are the players react? How are the teammates now? How, how's the locker room now reacting to this? Don't care. Don't care. You don't care. They don't care. Don't, they don't care. They shouldn't. They, I'm going to tell you something. Jesse told they we were 1-15, and, we and, and then next year we were 7-9. But when Jimmy went to getting rid of guys – it, it made you, at, as a player, look over to the guy next to you. Remember somebody got knocked out Sunday and nobody cared? Okay, now today you're going to start caring? <laughs> no, nah, dog, you gone. I'm still here. I got to play. And that's how I looked at it. What, what we now have to, now is know. starting Sunday, a, a, any man left on this roster starting Sunday begins your nine-game audition. Thank you. It begins your nine-day audition. This is, this, is what, this, is, this is going to be the lasting impression that Coach McCarthy and his staff have of you. This is your, so this is why you're seeing the older guys maybe moved out, some other guys who they don't plan on keeping here very long. Move those guys out because I'm going to play some of these, the Bradley and Nas of the Worlds and the other players of the Worlds. Because now, don't get much more the, play now. Now I need to yeah. see what we're going with forward. This is your nine-game audition because going into the offseason, it's not going to be the hoopla of, you know, hey, I got to get signed. I got to get settled in. I got to find a house. I got to move my family. I got to deal with the COVID. No, 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 no. Now I'm, I'm going to have a very good, knowledgeable understanding of who you are as a man, what your work ethic looks like, what you are as an intelligent football player. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't ever attack anyone's, sometimes I do, attack anyone's, like off the field intelligence, but your football intelligence, your work ethic, your effort, who you are as a man, where you fit at in this team going forward. You got nine games. Starting Sunday, you have a nine game audition to prove to Coach McCarthy and others, I want to be a part of this football team. Because come whenever the last game of the season is, because let's be honest, fellas, Andy Dalton didn't, didn't practice today. The likelihood of him playing in the game on Sunday is slim. It's slim, okay? He doesn't play. We're going to be 2-6. and six. We got Pittsburgh, the Vikings, and the Baltimore Ravens coming up. We probably won't win those games. This season's done. I, I hate to say it. I hate to say it, and maybe I shouldn't say it like that, but th there isn't much left of this season. Now I have to start preparing myself for 2021, and it starts on Sunday, and the guys left on this roster have a nine-game audition to figure out what they want to be, if they want to be a part of this Dallas Cowboys football team under the tutelage and coaching of Mike McCarthy. This and was the guys a that, that these young guys that started under Garrett and began their development under Garrett be like retrained in a way. Can yes. They, can yep. Yes. Yeah. 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 See. You, you, you're never going to have a problem with a football player that loves football. The problem is you got a bunch of guys that don't love football. I mean, uh, if you're not a great route runner, what do you do? You work on your routes. If you, if you don't have great hands, what do you do? You work on your hands. It's all fall up on the umbrella of do I love football? Do I love what I do enough to get better and better and better? Coaches can see guys grow. That's why they want to give this nine-game addition that Jess is talking about. They want to see Bradley Arnay before next year. Whereas with us, we didn't know who Tristan Hill was. We drafted him in the second round. And we didn't know who this guy was. We barely know who Darns Armstrong is because you draft these guys and don't play these guys. That don't work unless you have a Super Bowl, a NFC, AFC championship team where you drafted a guy because he was the best athlete. We drafting guys and not playing them 
And our guys are getting older. We're getting older, free agents. You have to play these guys. So when you draft next year, you have a true meaning of what your team looks like. Okay, Darren Armstrong, he ain't what we think he is, but he truly is a backup. We got to get another defensive end. We got to get another outside linebacker. We, you, you, don't, you don't have to guess on who these guys is now because you will see who these guys is. Who, what's, nice. What do you guys think is the – this was a mailbag question from the website. What's the biggest, I guess, priority for the Cowboys moving forward? Is it winning games? Is it developing players? Is it building the culture? Is it? I mean, it's all tied all together. It. I'm sure you're going to say all the above. Yes, sir. Right, it's but. all of it. It's all of it. It's all of it. It's all of it. Because as you, as you get better and better players and as you change the culture and the way people think, it all going to create great winning. It's Nate all, allu- all going to create great winning. Nate alluded to this the other day. Um, I, I, it was either Nate or, or Shannon. But they said, to the point of winning games, this team is probably not going to win a bunch of more games. But... I don't want to see you get beat 33-3. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You flew to D.C. for a field goal? <laughs> I want to be able to see you be competitive, right? Like, I think the Cowboys, I know the Cowboys look at this and go, we're not going to win anything this year. So let's start changing things. But I want to see a much more competitive game. Like, I want to see them actually compete and be in a game. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not win it, but like, you know what? I saw fight. I saw... And, and not when you're down 21 points. Like, you know, I think the last that's what they want to see. That? The last time we saw that was the very first game of the, of the year. The first game was the Rams. Mm-hmm. It was competitive. Yeah, they ran the ball on us. Yeah, they out-tricked us. But people were competitive. And each game from that point on, it's been 12 points down, 14 points down, 20 points down. And everybody's talking about rallying back. Well, ain't no more that. Ain't no more rallying back. Right. So here we sit, guys are, being, guys are leaving. Whatever the reason they are leaving, as, as Dallas Cowboy football fans, be happy. Understand what is happening. Like Jesse said, whether you wanted this or not, it is upon us. It is upon us. I ain't going to use the T word. I'm going to use the S word. We sank it. <laughs> we sank it, bro. The ship, we've thrown people overboard so we can lift ourselves up. I'm staying with the big yacht theory. I love that. How we chug in with tugboats around us, pulling us in. That's some young guys pulling us on into the dock so we can refill with fresh new players. Fix this ship, Mike. Let's go. All right. Let's take our first break. When we come back, let's talk a little Eagles, Cowboys, and maybe keep this conversation going like it is, possibly. We don't know. We'll be right back after we take the first break. Uh, Hang it with the boys. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for tailgating with the OtterBox boys. OtterBox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases? The one and only. But cases are just the start. OtterBox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their Elevation Tumblers? And OtterBox Elevation Tumblers come in three sizes. A 10-ouncer, a 20-ouncer, and even a 64-ounce growler. Check out all the colors and sizes of their Elevation Tumblers at otterbox.com. It's football season, and when you're tailgating with your friends and your family, you want the best meat on your grill. Pettigene Meats makes the best hot dogs, the Pettigene Griller, or the All Beef Franks will score. To complete that tailgate meal, Pettigene Meats has hickory smoked sausage, hot links, Polish sausage, and the best hickory smoked bacon and ham around. Available at your local retailer. And a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. It's Pettigene Meats. Taste the difference. We can't wait to see the Cowboys back on the field, and we can't wait to pack AT&T Stadium to watch them play. When that time comes, SeatGeek is the place to get all of your tickets, plus tickets to the hundreds of games, concerts, rodeos, and other live events we'll all be able to enjoy again soon. Every SeatGeek purchase is protected by a buyer guarantee, which means you'll get your money back if your event is canceled. Guaranteed. SeatGeek. Let's go. 
Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. How great would it be to travel to watch the Cowboys win on another team's turf? Pretty great. But honestly, just watching the game from anywhere but your house would be fun. Even a hotel bar with some guy named Phil from St. Louis who thinks Oakland still has a team. So whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, Book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Adjust your cleats, adjust your pads, even adjust your helmet, but seriously, don't adjust your underwear because once it's seen, it cannot be unseen. Tommy John's fabric keeps you cool and dry on the field or in the stands, and now they even have loungewear. Yeah, loungewear. Shop your underwear at tommyjohn.com forward slash cowboys for 15% off your first order. tommyjohn.com forward slash cowboys. All right, let's get into a little cowboys offense. And I was thinking driving down the road the other day, and I'm by no means comparing player to player, but I was just thinking, you know, we're in a very similar situation going into this week. We've been here before, and you know what we got out of this situation a couple of times? We got Tony Romo uh, out of this situation. We got Dak Prescott out of this situation. Now, I'm not going to go down the list of people oh that have Lord. been in this situation I- that... <laughs> that we we found out who they were, but I'm just saying let's turn the let's turn the young guy loose. Let's let, I'm ex, I'm ben somewhat DiNucci, excited baby. to see Ben DiNucci play. Now I don't you know is he Cooper Rush or is he Dak Prescott? I, I I don't know, but I'm I'm excited. I didn't see him hardly at all in training camp, but I mean if my if if we're sticking with the theme of what we talked about on this show for the last two weeks week and a half. If we're going to let the young guys play, like you said, Jesse, we're at a point where we're probably not winning many games without Dak. I love Andy Dalton. I love him as a backup. But we saw what he was able to do with this offensive line the way it is. Why not let – now, you might scar this guy for life and, and you, you know, ruin his career by you know, getting him blown up on every play, but I'm, I'm a little bit – Excited. I don't know if encouraged is the word, but like I want. I'm, I guess I want to see. I want to know what the unknown is, and, I, and plus he's got a cool ass name. So I mean, I, I'm. <laughs> I say let him play. I say let him play and let him sling it around, and let's just see what happens. I know this is not real war, but they say in each war there will be casualties. For the good, for the betterment of the whole. <laughs> so let's go Ben DiNucci, baby. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Listen. I said it yesterday. I am excited. I called Kurt before the show, you know, because we had to talk over some player movement. And I told him, I said, I'm ready for Ben DiNucci. I said, uh, with the way our offensive line is looking, you better have a mobile quarterback in there that can move around and get out of the way of some of this, some of this strap metal that's coming called Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to see your, the redhead set, standing back there getting, getting right, you know, getting his rifle unloaded. I promise you. Yeah, I wouldn't think uh, Dalton would be in too big a hurry to come back anyway. But, you know, with, with facing that defensive line and. Thank you. you. Know, Putting up more bad video for uh, for a potential contract next year, so I'm kind of with you, Shannon, Nate, Jesse. I think that well, I haven't heard J- Jesse may not feel that way, but I, I'm kind of with. Let's ride that Danucci train. Let's see what we got. We, it's, odds are Dalton won't be back next year. You've got a young guy you want to develop. Why not? But you know, I wouldn't unless he just gets out there and is totally overwhelmed, you know, and just scared to death or whatever. I think. You got to see what you got in him and, and let him throw. If you I mean, weren't scared of against them first round picks, 
He ain't got but like two people yeah. to deal with, and that's Brandon Cox. And, I mean, uh, Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox. So, you know, yeah. I put their names kind of, together. That means they must be a bad man. <laughs> it was kind of funny. What, his first play, botches that pitch to Zeke and fumbles. But then his first pass was beautiful, man. He slipped it right in there to, to uh, Same, to, uh, so was uh Amari on the sideline. So... Who knows? He looked, you know, that first play, he looked like he That's didn't want any part of football. It's all right, fantasy football is great. Yeah. <laughs> fantasy football is great, hope, but let's, let's not what do, do that. Think? Jesse's what do you shaking think, Jesse, his head. Jesse, the turn the neutral loose. Help me here. Turn the neutral <laughs> loose or what? What are we doing? We're going to turn him loose now. You're going to turn him loose all you want. <laughs> <laughs> but a hit dog will holler. <laughs> hey, hit one of your dogs, Kurt. <laughs> hey, you turn, you let him off that leash, and he run in the street because he don't know no better. That car gonna hurt. <laughs> sometimes, wow. sometimes you need wow. to keep the puppy on the porch. I... And as someone who was always looking for an opportunity to play, I guarantee you, when the year started for Ben Denucci, Ben had no idea. He had hope, I mean, is, but no he idea. Had no, he had no hope. He knew, <laughs> I'm just going to be here for this year, and, and I'll try again next year. And he's thrusted into this position, but you're thrusted into this position with a bad offensive line. Your running back is not playing well, so you can't lean on him, right? If, you, if Zeke was playing up to par, you say, you know what? We're just going to hand this thing off. We're going to give you some easy throws. And you're, going, you're, you're not getting, this is not like week 17, week 16, where Philly has already locked up the division so they can play some people who are as bad as you. Mm. No, they're still in the thick of this. So they're not looking, they're looking at, oh, you're going to play the young rookie kid? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to unleash him. We're going to unleash our dogs. The Kraken. Against your puppy. <laughs> So can and the, that can, can the sometimes can the Cowboys do anything? I mean, obviously their best playmakers are the receivers. Can they do anything to help him get that ball in their hands? Nope. <laughs> oh, nice. Just don't direct, 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 I'm gonna tell direct you snap. Don't direct let snap. don't let don't let Jesse do that to y'all. <laughs> don't let Jesse do that to y'all. They can help him. How By much? Prayer. No, By prayer. No. How much? By prayer. Paying their tithes so that they can make sure that they got paying their tithes, asking for forgiveness, hashing out anything that's gone wrong with you in the past so that you can get a direct clear line of Jesus Christ because that boy going to need prayer. <laughs> Let me say this right here. They can help this young guy and they can they can scheme up some things. I'm not saying that he's not going to get baptized, Jesse. But they can do some things. Yeah, I, I, they can do some things to help this baby boy. I, I, I'm telling you, these OP, what is it, what is it called? What, run play, run pass RPO? option. They yeah. have to, that have to be 80% of their game. They, they this couldn't kid, do anything with the guy who had over 100 starts in this league, let, who let was a this, starter Jesse, for nine years. Now. Let All me right, finish for you. Up. Make people get off of the air because you finna gloom and doom me off the air. Uh, <laughs> wow, boy, you got me thinking hard now. Uh, what they have to do is everything has to be run pass base. And what they, and I noticed with uh, and this happened a lot with the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback as a rookie. They gave him one side of the field and a quarter of that. If this guy ain't open. Son, move around a little bit, then either throw it away or run. Ben DiNucci, we're going to give you one quarter of the field. Look over there. If it ain't there, <laughs> move around a little bit and either make up your mind to run or throw it. Throw it away or run it. Now, if you decide to take this sack, like Jesse said, we'll just call the Humane Society and come and let them come get you. All right. <laughs> and uh, as the receiver of this group, you know what you know what frust you know what nothing that frustrates a receiver more is? To know you ain't gonna be that one guy. <laughs> to know that you ain't getting the ball a day. <laughs> to know that this joker ain't gonna be able to throw the ball to you. Uh, to know that he probably don't see what you see. To know that he gonna tuck it and run or check it down as much as he wants. Throw the ball out of bounds. It's going to be we off kilter. 
I, I'm man. just saying. That, that's that's the frustrating thing for a receiver. So, but, I hate you know. Darius Slay. Darius Slay, I hate him because when he was in Detroit, he would be hurt by, by the sixth game of the year. He's still healthy. I hate Jalen Mills. He's having a good year. The strong safety. I hate these guys now. I hate them. <laughs> but but th- I, I, I there is what. one. <laughs> I guess there's there. Go ahead, Kirk. Oh, I was just. I guess we're probably going to see a, a big game from uh, hopefully from uh, Schultz, Dalton Schultz. He going to be their security blanket then? Oh, they're going to be jamming him. See, no? when when you, the the coaches. And, and, and I'm not saying our coaches ain't smart, but I used to be mad because we would play great tight ends, and we, would sacrif- we wouldn't sacrifice that one-half pass rusher that wasn't going to get to no way to jam this tight end. Don't be surprised if they have him anywhere close to the line, they're going to jam him every time or make him have to run around a defender to get where he need to go. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. I, J- Nate hates a lot of people in the Eagles team, but there's one guy – that he likes more than I love. anybody in the league. And, and we he, will find out and he's been who going that slow. is when we come back for the last segment <laughs> he's been of Hanging going with slow. the Boys. Turn the nooch loose. Let's who go. Let the, the dogs out. <laughs> burr, burr, burr. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for Tailgating with the Otterbox Boys. Otterbox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases? The one and only. But cases are just the start. Otterbox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their elevation tumblers? And Otterbox elevation tumblers come in three sizes. A 10-ouncer, a 20-ouncer, and even a 64-ounce growler. Check out all the colors and sizes of their elevation tumblers at otterbox.com. It's football season, and when you're tailgating with your friends and your family, you want the best meat on your grill. Pettigene Meats makes the best hot dogs, the Pettigene Griller, or the All Beef Franks will score. To complete that tailgate meal, Pettigene Meats has hickory smoked sausage, hot links, Polish sausage, and the best hickory smoked bacon and ham around. Available at your local retailer. And a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. It's Pettigene Meat. Taste the difference. We can't wait to see the Cowboys back on the field, and we can't wait to pack AT&T Stadium to watch them play. When that time comes, SeatGeek is the place to get all of your tickets. Plus, tickets to the hundreds of games, concerts, rodeos, and other live events we'll all be able to enjoy again soon. Every SeatGeek purchase is protected by a buyer guarantee, which means you'll get your money back if your event is canceled. Guaranteed. Seat Geek. Let's go. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. Is your family a Cowboys family? Have you taken holiday photos at the Star? Was your wedding theme blue and silver? Have you convinced your kids them is spelled with a D? If so, every game day feels like a vacation to you, so treat it like one. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Hey, Cowboys fans. What better way to spend Thanksgiving than in a private suite at AT AT&T Stadium with your family to watch the best game of the year? Head to DallasCowboys.com forward slash hotels for a chance to win a private suite, a free night's hotel stay, and transportation to and from the game on a private Dallas Cowboys bus, all courtesy of Hotels.com. And you get to see Kane Brown. He was just announced today as the, the halftime performer at the Thanksgiving Day game. So, all right, fellas, welcome back to the SWBC Mortgage Living Room, Frisco, Texas. Shannon Gross, Jesse Holly, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels. We're discussing should they turn the nooch loose? Well, if they turn the nooch loose, he's got a guy on the other side of the of the ball that's that's going to try to call the Humane Society, as, as Nate has been saying on him. 
Nate, your favorite player in the league, who is it? Fletcher Cox, man. He uh he had an ankle injury, I think, last year. Something wrong with his lower body. And uh, he's he's not been that guy. He's still commanding double teams, and other guys are flourishing. Brandon Graham and uh, young uh, Derek Barnett, they're flourishing, you know, getting sacks. They got 24 all together. But I'm, I'm telling you, man, uh, with our offensive line being depleted the way it is, uh, they got their hands full. And I was asking Kurt earlier, when do they expect back to center? You know, uh, Looney. He could be back as early as this, as early as this week. He started. He's in that three-week window now of coming back, so he could come back. But it, I don't know. It doesn't sound like they're. He's at least practicing. Nate, when, so. And they may not let him come back. They may like want to go with the young guy. So. Yeah. When he comes Travis back, kind of, if he comes back, and even if he doesn't, go ahead, Kurt. I think you're going to say the same thing. How, how do you, how do you shuffle the offensive line? Go ahead, Kurt. Yeah, I mean, is at this point. I mean, we've been talking about playing the young guys on defense. I mean, do we need to find out what the young guys on offense have? I mean, do you keep – McGovern wasn't totally awful the last game. Do you want us to find out what he can do? Do you try to kick out – now, this game is a, kind of a tough one with, you know, Fletcher in there. But, I mean, do you keep those young guys in there, Biotish, you know, uh, McGovern? Well, no, if, if, your center, if, your center come, if your center comes back – and you feel good with the artist, you feel they're the same guy. So you keep that there. The right guard is the right guard. He's the president. He's coming back. If he comes back, you let him play. Now that puts uh, McGovern back on the bench as the swing guard. Uh, what about moving Martin to tackle? Uh-uh. I, I, no? I just wouldn't do it. If you had something, if you had something serious to protect, yeah. then I would do it. If you were saying Dak was still back there and we were trying to protect Dak, so let's put the best guys out best to make five, move. Yeah. At this point in time, man, leave him right there. Let him be what he be, and let him you know. be. Let him fight. Right now, you know, if we keep saying that, let the young guys play. It's about let the young guys play. Watch now, out for that rock waller. Yeah, uh, I guess what you, I, you know, would you rather have Cam Irving in there, who you know is not a part of this future, or would you rather have McGovern in there? You sure Cam Irving ain't a part of this future? Well, he hasn't. I mean, yeah. no, I'm not sure, but that's what I'm saying. So. You know, is it going to be the other kid, uh, Greg, uh, I can't, S-E-N-A-T? Is it going to be him? Senate. You got it. You need a swing tackle, and they prefer veteran swing tackles. So I'm not saying who's going to be where or what, but uh, who is that guy? Uh, Cam Irvin was the guy they wanted, even when we had the five regular guys there. They wanted him as that swing tackle. So – the defenses are a little bit more clear. When we talk about the defense, it's clear who has been playing well and who's not. Now you down to all backups on our offensive line. So these guys are, are, are even more playing for their, for their lives in this, on this team and in this league. If they can get them nine good games in, they're not only going to be on somebody's team next year, they're going to be getting paid good money if they show yeah. that, they can, that, that they're better than average. But do they need Jesse, to be given the offensively, to show? offensively this week, obviously Andy Dalton and Ben DiNucci are two completely different quarterbacks, at least from a, you know, a experience standpoint and being able to recognize things. With you not knowing, we all assume that Andy Dalton's not playing, but as far as the game plan, how do you prepare – with two different game plans, not knowing which quarterback you're going to have this Sunday. It's, it's all about Ben DiNucci, man. Don't, it, you know, I understand about being uh, whatever these coaches try to do, you know, hide things. I mean, you, is you really think their defense scared one way or the other? Do, no, do no. You really think they're nervous? <laughs> no. I, see, I, you, that's Good one point. thing I liked it about. Coach Johnson, it's one thing I liked it about Coach Landry. It, 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 it comes a point. What are you hiding? What, what, what are you? I'm serious. So that ain't even a factor. That ain't even a factor whether Andy Dalton. Don't do that to Andy Dalton. Let him get his head clear and his mind right. Let this kid Danucci do what he has to do. Let Gilbert be the backup. Make things more 
accountable for this kid being the nooch and things that he's that you can get your plays close to his plays that he did in college. That's what you do. That's what the better offensive coordinators around this league do. Get his kid some type of comfort, what liberty he can gather against this, this uh, uh, decent pass rush. It ain't what we faced last week, but it is a veteran team that knows how to play, and they smelling blood. I listened kind of to Carson Wentz, them interview, and they, and they playing the role of Dallas is still dangerous. Please, come on, man. Dangerous <laughs> with what? <laughs> so how do hey, – with, 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 uh, come on. With the rookie – Be gearing up to stop the run. Is there anything they can do to get Zeke going? Sure, everything like last week. They try to make everything fast. You, what you want now is things hitting fast, hitting fast. Uh, you know what I would try to do? Go with a draw or two, just an old fashioned draw, and uh, let guys rush up field and try to take them. You know, take them where they want to go, but a little bit faster. And uh, let Zeke pick his way through that, man. But if you're talking about trying to get something that's slow developing. That ain't finna happen. Yeah. Now, everything you do, unless it's misdirection counterplay, because last week Washington brought, brought back out that, uh, that, that old counterplay, and they weren't pulling the backside tackle with the backside guard. They was pulling that tight end. Uh, they was pulling the H back, and uh, they was punishing us, man. Jesse, hmm. offensively for the Cowboys, give me some hope. Give me one thing to be hopeful <laughs> for this week. Just give they me one, one thing. One thing to hang on to. One thing to look forward to. The plane landing safely in Philadelphia. Oh, my goodness, Jesse. No. Come on. <laughs> you know what, Jesse? Something. Stop with that foolishness, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't try to stay serious, face either. We don't want to even see that, man. Come on. <laughs> One thing they have a chance, you know man, what? Just this, by this, this competing. They have a what? They have a what? They have a chance if they go out and compete. I'm out. <laughs> if they, they have a chance. If if they if they compete, I ain't saying they're gonna win the game. Just it's a difference competing and winning a game. You just said earlier. That I'm taking my mic off. Like, he just, you said earlier <laughs> out of your own mouth that. We know they may not win the game, but they sh- they should uh, keep keep it close. Did no, you not I, say that? No, now you taking said, that back? No, 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 no. Don't put words in my mouth. Trust me, I do a good enough job talking. Okay, but what did you say? That's what I just asked. I, I said, let me fix my okay. mic. Okay, lose said, your mic. Yeah, because you, yeah, fix it. I up. said that they should want to start seeing them compete. I didn't say they were going to compete. Oh, you hoping that you you hoping that they hope that they want to compete. In this nine game audition, <laughs> right. the coaches are saying, you know what, I want to start seeing guys compete and, and, and trying to go out there. You may not win the game, but I don't want it to look like the way that it's looked the first seven weeks of the season. I want it to look like you're out there trying to compete and show me that you want to be a part of this football team going forward. Whether that's effort, alignment assignment, uh uh uh, you know, doing your tasks. We saying Actually the same out there play. thing. You just being small about it, bro. We saying the same thing. You just trying to be small about it. We saying the same thing. Yes. The bro. best thing that can happen out of this game that you get, you 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 have more opportunities to keep feeding Zeke the ball and get him out of his slump and maybe get him going in a positive direction. I I, I think Kurt agrees with me and he just left the meeting. See, oh, he got you, you, you talking that crazy stuff. He hung up too. Huh. Yeah. Now, but, but we saying basically the same things, yeah. Hey, hey, Shannon. Yeah. Give Jesse some hope. Give Jesse some hope, Shannon. <laughs> give us all some hope. Um, my hope is, <laughs> I mean, I was going to save this for later in the week, but right. my, hope, my hope is you're, you're making moves. You're putting guys on notice. Like you guys said, you're, you've got a nine-week audition. Hopefully it lights a fire under some guys. You've got – some guys that are playing for jobs. You're not playing a great team. You're not playing, you know, we're not going and playing Seattle. We're not playing Tennessee. We're not playing any of those. We're playing the Eagles. They're just as bad, if not worse, than we are. And if you win the game, you're still in first place in the division. They got their quarterback, Shannon. They're not as bad as us. They do. 
They do, but I mean that's my hope. There's not a lot. Than us. They have a more healthy offensive line than us. They have a better quarterback than us. You they're said not, give they're, you they're, some hope. Every hope I'm, gets I'm man struggling. Shoot now. I'm, I'm struggling sorry. here, but that's I'm the sorry. hope. That's I'm sorry. that's all I can offer. That's the only hope I have. I, look, I don't, I don't have any misgivings about this. I until they win a game, I, I'm not picking them again the rest of the year. Like I, I don't, I, I can't. I, they, you go put three points up in Washington, you can't expect me to be like, you know. I'm going to struggle to have hope the rest of the season. But I'm also saying it's football and crazy things happen in football, and that's why they play the games every Sunday. They're going to win another game or two this year, and one may be one that you don't expect. I don't know if that's this week, whatever. They're not favored in any games. All right, so I'm going to end Hmm. this show on a positive note. Here's my head on this show on a positive note. Please. Okay, I want to end this show on a positive note. I want to give a personal shout out to my friend, Martha Nichols. Martha is heading into surgery this Friday. Uh, she's battling cancer. And I want Martha to know from me, from Kurt, from Nate, from Chris, from Shannon, we fighting with you, Martha. Okay? Yes. As Kurt yes. is someone who's been with it, we are fighting with you. We are positive. We are sending good vibes. We are praying for you. We're sending strength. And you promised me, Martha, about a year ago. We've never met. We, we talk almost every day on Twitter. You promised me a year ago that you were going to hug my neck when you got better and out of this COVID. And I do not want to be cheated. So we want to just say to you, Martha, we are praying for you. Surgery will be a success on Friday. You will beat cancer again. And I will get my neck hugged by you. So. We're just wishing you all the best. We are praying for you. We love you. And we want we know that you're going to come out on the other side of this thing better than ever for your girls, for your twins and for your family. All right, Martha, we're in your corner. Hanging with the boys. Got your back. Let's go, Martha. Hey, when yeah. all this when all this covid stuff's over with and you're on the other side of this and we're able to get together, we're going to bring you on the show if Jesse ain't been fired by then. <laughs> which, is, which, is, which is highly likely that I probably will be. <laughs> you can hug his neck on the show. Let's do that. All right, fellas. That's an ender. We got a little. I tried to give you a little hope, but you guys didn't want to take it. So maybe tomorrow I can find no, something Jesse better. No, Jesse shot the, it the down. I'm with you. I'll bring some <laughs> okay, hope tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow uh, I will bring some hope. Okay. Can but we you talk know what? About- that's going to be tough because we talk about the Cowboys' defense. So that's, that's going to be a tough <laughs> We'll be, be a tough the class one, tomorrow, right? We'll be, we'll better be do somewhere s- special tomorrow, right? You better do some research. Yes, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be somewhere that we can't really promote because we, we can't draw a crowd. But we will be, we will be at, at an, either on or outside of an RV tomorrow. So make sure you check in and watch the video portion because – we are all going to be socially distanced, but we will be in the same place at the same time for the first time in a long, long time. So y'all will want to check this out. Funtown RVs sponsoring the next two shows the next two days. Tune in tomorrow to see where we're at. It I should be fun. have some buzz. I know. I want some laugh. food or some cold beer or something. <laughs> Let's go. All right, fellas. I want Nate, baby RV, Kurt, baby. <laughs> Jesse. Chris, thanks for keeping us on the air. We'll be back tomorrow. Special shows the next two Way days. Go, Mr. Check Hopeless, it out. Jesse. Martha, go kick cancer's ass. See y'all tomorrow. Let's do it. Yep. Hopeless Jesse with the Cowboys. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!